Hey everybody, about two months ago I did a video called New Music is Faltering and I'm Loving It and it was based on an article by Ted Joya from The Atlantic called Is Old Music Killing New Music? And in it he talked about how old songs now represent 70% of the US music market according to the latest numbers from MRC Data, a music analytics firm. So I talked a lot about the stats that are showing old music making kind of a comeback and it seems like younger people are starting to purchase more old music and that got into the discussion of how new mainstream music and new pop music lacks soul and how I, I, I think I use the term uh, laptop music and computerized music and m music that sounds computerized and it's not reaching us older folks because we came from a different era, this analog era where we can really feel the art more because of how it was written, how it was recorded and where the emphasis was. So that that um, discussion yielded some really wonderful comments from all of you guys and I wanted to share some of those with you. First of all, <clears throat> let's start with tunes done by one. They say, today's music is reflective of our culture. By holding the music in your hand, as you say, it suggests a more tangible relationship with the music itself. There also may be more appreciation for how music got into those hands if it is in physical form. Christopher said, the producer and his or her ability to manipulate digital technology have taken the place of songwriters and artists as the driving force in the recording industry. It is a poor substitution, in my opinion. And as you mentioned, a handful of giant risk-averse corporations decide what the public should hear. And not surprisingly, it is generally formulaic and soulless junk. Uh, yes, and Frank Zappa had once said, I forget who mentioned this in the comments, but Frank Zappa said, pop music will eat itself. And that seems to be what's going on today. William Bill said, I listen to old songs and feel what the music does to me. I find that it is more a question of feeling than just sound. Remix Culture says, yeah, I feel like I'm being played when I listen to this music. It's too slick and frankly not aimed at me, which is why I don't give it a second listen. Older music had such wide appeal. Now the separate age groups can support huge sales of one type of music. We have music for the ass shakers, for the prepubescents, indie for the post-college lost people, rap, homogenized rock, etc. None of this is designed for my consumption, but all that I mentioned have lucrative audiences, and I think they just designed the music specifically for a narrow audience which still yields huge profits. Daubry Jane Weirdsley says, quotes uh, music critic and writer Charles Shar Murray, who once opined that this is the first time the parents and grandparents' record collections are hipper than their offspring. So Daubry Jane goes on to say, for those of us growing up in the post-war West, rock and roll was the new frontier. There was no precedent. Rock had to be invented. Unfortunately for contemporary rock musicians, rock and pop is now a formidable canon spanning over 60 years, like classical music, against which they will be compared and judged. Nothing in contemporary pop rock has captured the universal zeitgeist of the age. Contemporary white rock has simply become a minor niche market co-opted by big business without cultural relevance. We've ended up with rap artists as cartoon caricatures of misogynistic, violent capitalist excess and anemic bourgeois indie rockers driveling on self-consciously about how alienated they are. Photocopies of the past endlessly recycled and each copy more faded than the last. So thank you for that substantive comment, Daubry Jane Weirdsley. Moving on to A Walrus. The new music isn't really about music. It's about putting lyrics over the top of sound. Many lyrics from the 60s through 90s were chosen purely out of artistic license and were impossible to be taken literally or even metaphorically. Hmm. Well, Frab just Day. As with any art form, music is an expression of the soul. If an artist relies on a computer to generate music, the music can't reach you. Therefore, neither can the artist, because it is an art. Computer-generated music doesn't care about you. I'm sure that not only are the young people rediscovering the music that reaches you and cares about you, they're experiencing that for the first time. Ironically, it's the music industry which is designed to reach into your wallet. But what the industry doesn't realize is that the kids are turning away from it and flocking toward having their soul reached. Well said. On to Mr. Diddle, Mr. Diddy D. The fact that a young generation that are rejecting contemporary artists in favor of older music just tells me that the modern music has lost its ability to connect with them and just lacks soul, meaning, and creativity. Way too much of today's new music sounds generic and lacks any real personality. 
Moving on to TR. Today's music has abandoned literacy for the sake of repeating the hook to the point where it becomes a mantra surrounded by hollow, forgettable phrases. Even worse, the American idolization of music precludes there ever being another major artist who looks and sounds like Dylan, Randy Newman, or Tom Waits. Great writers whose voices evoke thoughts, emotions, and dimensions that turn their songs, which are often covered by more conventional singers, into experiences. All right, I'm going to go back to page one here. <clears throat> Michael Rochester said something rather interesting. He talked about, the number one thing that bothers me is that hits are having a longer time on the top of the charts for no apparent reason. Because I don't think people are demanding to hear that song that much, that it stays at number one for 13 or 14 weeks. Before the sound scan era, if you got to number one for nine or 10 weeks, that was usually enough because the public got tired of that song after a while. So I, I looked up some stats. I, that's something I've always felt as well. I've noticed that more contemporary music does have longer lasting staying power on the charts. Let me just do some comparing here, if I can find it. Okay, we're going to look at the decade of the 60s. There were two songs that were at the number one position for nine weeks, only two. One was Theme from a Summer Place by Percy Faith, and the other was Hey Jude by the Beatles. The next one would have been seven weeks at number one. There were four songs that fit that criteria. 61's Toss and Turn by Bobby Lewis, I Want to Hold Your Hand by the Beatles, I Am a Believer by the Monkees, and I Heard It Through the Grapevine by Marvin Gaye. And then there was three songs that were on the, on the number one spot for six weeks. Elvis says, Are You Lonesome Tonight? Uh, from 1960, and two from 1969, in the year 25, 25 by Zagar and Evans, and Aquarius Let the Sun Shine In by The Fifth Dimension. So let's compare those with the two decades from this century. First, we have Old Town Road by Lil Nas X solo or featuring Billy Ray Cyrus. Man, that's a mouthful. At uh, 19 weeks in 2019. Then we have Despacito, Yankee featuring Justin Bieber at 16 weeks. We have a Black Eyed Peas song, I Got a Feeling, at 14 weeks at number one. Uptown Funk by Mark Ronson featuring Bruno Mars at 14 weeks. And there are six other songs, 12 weeks at number one. So you can see the difference. The, the top song old town road more than doubling anything in the 60s at the number one position i think what um mike rochester said that i would think people will get sick of these songs after a while i think people got sick of hey jude at nine weeks at number one so let's also look at how many weeks it spent on the top 100 because that's also indicative uh and, and there's a great divide between these two time eras here so in the 60s 60 to 69 hey jude was on the chart on the top 100 for 19 weeks so nine weeks at number one, that means 10 weeks of it either going up or going down. The song Something, 16 weeks. I Want to Hold Your Hand, She Loves You, and I'm a Believer, 15 weeks on the charts total. And Theme from a Summer Place, that was actually 21 weeks on the charts. So let's compare that with this century. We have a song called Blinding Lights by The Weeknd, 90 weeks on the Billboard Top 100. Radioactive by Imagine Dragons, 87 weeks. I mean, this is two years on the charts. I would think you'd get sick of these songs. Sail by AWOL Nation at 79 weeks, and I'm Yours by Jason Mraz for 76 weeks. When comparing these two eras, what this suggests to me is there's a lot less good competition to knock off the top songs. If you look at the Beatles, as good as the Beatles were, they had five number one songs that only lasted one week at the number one position. Those songs are Love Me Do, Ticket to Ride, Penny Lane, All You Need Is Love, and Come Together. Then they had six songs that only lasted two weeks at the top of the charts. She Loves You, A Hard Day's Night, Eight Days a Week, Paperback Writer, Let It Be, and The Long and Winding Road. So competition was absolutely fierce in those days, and the Beatles had a hard time staying at the number one position. So I'm gonna bring old Frank Zappa in to bring this in for a landing. And that Canadian was the responder, the commenter that brought up this quote. Frank Zappa gave an interview once where he talked about the difference between who ran the music industry in the 60s and 70s and who ran it in the early 90s. According to Zappa, the record companies were originally run by old cigar chomping white guys who you might expect to be clueless as to emerging trends or what was popular in the record buying public at the time. 
they were a little clueless, to be honest, but when they were presented with a demo tape of an unknown or unsigned group, they were likely to shrug their shoulders and, and ask, I don't know, is this going to sell? They would then say, okay, let's find out. The result was two of the greatest decades of music ever. Contrast that with the new generation of younger guys that run the music industry now. They have predetermined ideas of what will or will not sell based on their own tastes, so few or no chances are being taken with new groups that have a unique sound or style. I thought that was a great way to compare the two eras, and Zappa, as usual, has a very good vision on what's actually going on. I wish he was here today. Um, you know, so I, all this says to me, I can't get past the fact that music today reflects the times, and Western civilization is in decline, and there really isn't any art form uh, in pop culture that's really very creative or pushing any boundaries now. The only thing that's really going in that direction would be technology. Those are the big areas where we see these big pushes. And pop culture is in a very derivative and mediocre phase right now, and I think the music reflects that. I think it's that simple. I know that uh, most of my audience is my age or older, and uh, I got uh, some people were saying I was just an angry boomer, you know, get off my grass kind of thing, but really, I think, how else can you talk about today's music without comparing it? I mean, how else are you gonna know what's great or what's shit? You know, that's how you do it. And some people just don't like the comparison. And uh, well, that's tough, because that's what's gonna happen. That's not to say there's a great new music today, because I, I do hear excellent new music. It's just not in the mainstream. And, you know, it's more underground or it's harder to find. So anyway, that's my uh, little wrap up and my response to my own video. And I wanted to uh, honor some of the people that left excellent quotes and excellent comments. I really enjoy, uh, that's one of the things I love about this channel right now is I, I get some really great feedback from all of you people. I can see some dialogue underneath the videos with all you guys are, are talking and getting ideas across. And it's really quite entertaining. And I wanted to just praise you for some of these great comments. I wasn't able to read them all but I just hit some highlights I was copying and pasting as they, as they came in a couple months ago. So I'm happy to be able to get back to these now. So thank you so much for all the comments and all the collaboration, because that's what this channel is about. So I'll be back with plenty more here on Pop Goes the 60s. Mm -hmm.